Shape keys are actually one of the most versatile uh, animating properties you can use in Blender. And the reason is, is because you can't actually animate while in edit mode. And I'll explain that a little bit in a second, but hey guys, welcome back to Touch by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we're going to be learning about shape keys. Um, since I did get a comment about it, what we're going to do is we're actually going to keep the default cube today. I know, it's a happy day for default cube. We're going to leave our light, but we are going to switch to cycles right now just because uh, I like using the materials better. <laughs> so, shape keys are pretty much... Uh, if I go down here to this timeline down here, and I made my start frame zero, if I try and animate this cube, everybody knows how animation works, right? You hit I on your keyboard, location, move to another frame, let's say frame 50, hit G to move your cube, I location right so if i play this back you'll be able to see that the cube moves right the cube mo moves and that's great but what what we need sometimes especially for motion graphics i did this in the uh 2d ring tutorial that i made a while ago i used shape keys for that what we can do with shape keys is if i try and go into edit mode and let's say i want to make this cube stretch up i want to make this cube stretch up in my animation just like that like a building is coming up from the ground that's perfect like a building is rising from the ground in one of those uh you know one of those commercials where you know they make buildings or whatever <laughs> so if i try and do this you know if i try and animate this you can see if i hit i it does this this weird thing because i'm that's the inset button in uh, in edit mode i is the inset button so i can make a new plane and then extrude that down but that's not what we need i can't actually animate inside of edit mode so i can't i can't make this this cube bigger the only way i can do that is to scale it on the z axis and do something like that but even then you can't it's not the same thing so the way we can fix this is that we go over and bring this tab over a little bit make that big a bit bigger and we're gonna head on over to the what tab is it i always forget uh this tab right here yeah the little upside down triangle tab with the um this is like the normals tab. I, I don't remember what it's called right now. I'm pretty sure that's this is what it's called. But I'm just I'm just gonna call it the upside down. Oh yeah, that's what it's called. Object data. Yeah, I knew that. The object data tab, <laughs> the upside down triangle. Um, and down here you can tell the shape keys. I'm gonna I'm gonna downsize all these and we're gonna just focus on the shape keys part right here. As you can tell, there's a box here um, with nothing in it. And there's a plus over here. If we hit this plus once, it'll add something that's called the basis. This is the basis of our cube. This is pretty much how our cube looks right now. Pretty much what shape keys means is it's taking the data of this cube, all of the vertices, seeing how long they are, seeing what shape the cube is, and yada, 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 all that good stuff. This basis is this cube right now, the way it looks. If we hit the plus button again, what we, which is what we need to do, um, it'll add key one. Now, key one is what we want our cube to look like after the animation is over and finished. So what I'm going to do is with key one selected, we are going to hit in, hit into tab mode by hitting tab on our keyboard. We're going to select this top face while we're in face select mode, and we're just going to drag this up. We're going to drag it up to right there, and then we're going to hit tab to go out of edit mode. As you can tell, that snaps right back on down to where it was before. The reason for this is because our value is on zero. If we turn our value up, you can tell that our building will start to grow from the ground. How cool is that, all right? So now, you probably know how we're going to start to animate this if you're familiar with Blender. Um, but the way we're going to do this is we're going to go to one of our frames, the first frame, and we're going to hover our cursor inside the value uh, area. And we're going to hit I. Now, this lighted up yellow. This lit up yellow, which means that, that there is now a keyframe on that frame. So if we go to frame 50, and we scroll this all the way up, and then hit I, you'll be able to tell, once again, it's yellow. So this means now, our animation works so now as you can tell we've animated our building to go up and down so now it grows from the ground really quickly i'm gonna hit shift a and add in a plane and scale that by 20 on my numpad i'm gonna move this just below with g z just below the plane right there so our building will grow and as you can tell there is our building it grows from the ground and if we want to go even higher then what we can do is we can go back into edit mode and then just raise that up just like that and now when we animate it'll just go right straight back on down this is why shape keys are so versatile because not even just with cubes but we can add in let's say a uv sphere let's add in a uv sphere shift a and then uv sphere sphere right so if I add that in, and then let's say I want to hit 5 on my numpad to go into orthographic and 7 to go into top facing view. So now, we can looking at, now we're looking at the top of the sphere. If I do that and I select this, this vertice right here, hit O on my keyboard to go into um, proportional editing mode, and then I hit G 
and scroll my mouse wheel. Oh, let's go to the front facing view. Hit one in your numpad and then hit G and then just move this down. Scroll my mouse wheel in and just move that down. Hit Z on my keyboard so it goes straight down. And then we do something like that. Make an inside out, you know, cir circle, right? That looks pretty cool. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to control Z, undo that. And we're going to add in two shape keys. Boop, boop, two of them, right? So we have the basis and the key one, which is what we want our sphere to look like afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode. And we're going to select this one vertice once again. Uh, vertice mode right there. And we're going to do the same thing we just did. Uh, ooh, proportional editing needs to be turned back on right there. G, Z, scroll my mouse wheel up. And then just insert inside out that, something like that. Maybe not even inside, just like, like that. Flatten it out a bit. Now, if we turn our value up, you'll be able to tell our our circle squishes. How cool is this? This is the way I. This is the way you do most um, motion graphics. This is the way you do uh, so many different things. Like I said, mainly used for motion graphics. Um, you know, making things pop in and out and stuff like that. I just added a quick subdivision surface on that, and I changed the shading to smooth so you can see it a bit better. But that is super cool. So let's go to the first frame right here. And we will uh, hit uh, I on our keyboard and go to frame 50, turn that all the way up and hit I once again. So now we have our building that grows and we have our circle that flattens if we play this animation. Right. That is super cool. Um, that is pretty much it for shape keys. Like, like I said, you can do pretty much infinitely anything as long as you have the creativity. How awesome is that? That is shape keys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something new today. Um, yes, but that is, that is shape keys right there. One of my favorite tools in Blender. Um, but th that is it. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial, but until then, bye.